Welcome to the stream. I'm Malika Bilal. Millions of people in Indian-administered Kashmir are still living under curfew nine days after India's pro-Hindu government revoked its semi-autonomous status. How are Kashmiris coping and what lies in store for them? Join the conversation through Twitter and YouTube. Articles 370 and 35A. Little understood beyond India's borders a few days ago, but the striking out of these laws has jolted Indian-administered Kashmir and chilled relations with neighboring Pakistan, which also administers part of Kashmir. Thousands of paramilitary soldiers are on the streets of Kashmir after the Indian parliament approved a decree stripping its rights to make internal laws. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi of the ruling Bharatiya Janata Party has heralded what he calls a new era for Kashmir. But one of those who has faced difficulties contacting family in Kashmir is Natasha Cole, Associate Professor of Politics and International Relations at the University of Westminster. She is London-based, but today joins us from Montevideo, Uruguay. Baba Omar is a Kashmiri journalist at TRT World. He joins us from Istanbul. And completing our lineup is Sriram Chaulia, a professor and dean at the Jindal School of International Affairs. He is in New Delhi. Welcome to the stream, everyone. Thank you for staying up late for us. Sriram, why now, in your perspective, from your viewpoint, why do you think that this revocation happened now? Well, first of all, I want to say that a lot of these you know, expressions of alarm and anger uh, are not justified, and in fact, uh, they contain quite a great lot of uh, exaggeration. Uh, the humanitarian situation, the medical supplies, the essentials, uh, law and order, um, you know, movement of people uh, within their communities and the localities, all of them are going on. People offered prayer on Eid. People came out and, uh, you know, uh, did what they had to in Kashmir. So I think, you know, this projection that somehow it's under lockdown, I challenge that, first of all. It's uh, biased and not based on objective reality. Secondly, uh, why did we do this now? Why did India do this? Why did Narendra Modi do this? You see, the revocation of this special status was necessary to bring Kashmir into the national mainstream. What had happened was that Kashmir had developed into a very vicious, uh, ethnically polarized society. Jammu and Kashmir, as it was known, 68% uh, were Muslim, 28% were Hindus, and 2% were Buddhist and, uh, and uh, Sikhs. Now, what was going on within this, under the garb of this special status, was that the Kashmiri Muslim elites, some dynastic families, had monopolized power and were in some kinds of coalitions with uh, uh, other parties uh, from Jammu, which is Hindu majority, and they were actually uh, depriving the I people of Ladakh to of Buddhists. So what was going on was it was a kind of a, uh, a, a, a majority within a minority, you know, and that was what had to be broken. That, so that was, I think, the motive for Mr. Modi to do this. And secondly, you see, administratively, um, socially, as well as can economically, I just that? It was not doing well under so, the, for the last so seven years. I, I hear your point. Natasha wants yeah. to come in, and I, I will just say before you do, Natasha, I, I will just say that I want to make this clear for our audience, of course, that we're hearing from people online and from our guests that. Communications, of course, are down in Kashmir. Mm -hmm. And so uh, for you to say, Sriram, that everything is fine and for our, guests to, our other guests to say everything is not fine, it's hard to know when we're not allowed in and, and when journalism is not allowed to happen. So I, I, I do want to push back on that point a little bit. But Natasha, what point did you want to make? Can, can, I just refute the, can I just refute the facts from what Sriram just said? There's a very simple way of demonstrating that a population is not under siege. Allow them to speak. Why are the only Kashmiris that anyone in the world is able to reach right now to talk about Kashmir are all people outside? Allow them to speak. The precautionary measure taken for national can I, can I, can I, I'm sorry. Can I just can I just refute two of your other points? Can I just refute two of your other so, points? So, Sriram, you your connection is dropping out, which is making it hard for us to hear you. But on top of that, Natasha is making a point, and she let you make your point. So, so Natasha, you go ahead. Uh, so firstly, so firstly, if that's not the case, let Kashmiris in Kashmir speak. 
Secondly, to say that they were allowed to pray is hardly the way to understand the misery that Kashmiris are undergoing right now. An Indian fact-finding team that went there today was not allowed to screen their results at the press club. Thirdly, to say that this is about mainstreaming Kashmir in what way? It is about uh, how can Kashmiris be mainstreamed in all of this? What this is doing is mainstreaming Kashmir into a Hindutva agenda. And lastly, the point Sriram just made about elites. Well, these are precisely the elites that allowed BJP a, 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 you know, a foothold in Kashmir. So what has Mr. Modi got to complain about in that? Can I respond to this, please? Please. Yeah, listen. Uh, the situation on the ground is not at all as you know terrible as you're portraying it to be and secondly so but how do you know sriram i, I want to hear your point but i'd love to know how you know that where where your information is coming from the last nine days we're talking about and these restrictions are temporary these restrictions are not meant to be forever we're going to normalize the situation month by month week by week and in fact the government has already precisely. announced that after independence day which is 15th of august Gradually, the restrictions are being lifted from sector to sector. The restrictions remain well, only in the most... that's precisely how arbitrary power works. That's precisely the how of... arbitrary so, power works in tyrannies. That's um, not how democracies function where can there I is accountability. Baba, go ahead. It's not ever. Yeah, this is yeah. meant to be a pleasure, and I don't think See. we should be taking a mountain this out of the Mr. Sriram quoting government officials. I mean, why should we trust the government officials? They have been lying uh, since day one. They said we feel a terror threat, and they sent police to the houseboat, hotels, and they, they and they uh, managed to uh, you know kick out the pilgrims and the tourists out of Kashmir. Then they uh, then all the uh, pro-Indian leaders they went to meet the governor and all the top all officials. And, 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 and they were told that India will not tinker with 370 or 35A. Then suddenly the everything belief. is locked down. There's an, uh, block the on Kashmir. And so, Sridham, let, ba let Baba suddenly... finish his point. I hear... Natasha, what do you think when you hear that? What do you believe the BJP government hopes to gain from this? Well, I think Kashmir is a long-running movie from for Indians where it faces real estate and the people uh, has having walk-on parts. They're either exotic or cruel. What um, Mr. Modi, uh, what you just played his his speech makes no mention as to how any of this is going to go about by simply labeling people's aspirations for their rights as being terrorism and separatism does he have a special device that can somehow make people uh, act differently, behave differently, feel differently, because if not, then all this is going to do, this is a well choreographed uh, move, which will happen with militarization, increased militarization overnight. And this is a well choreographed move that is meant to push Kashmiris against a wall and to try and incite them about, uh, you know, their helplessness and incite them to greater violence. I think this has always been part of, of India's plan. In eighteen, you had the army general saying, I wish the Kashmiris would use guns instead of stones because then we could shoot them. This is again another a move that is meant, you know, it's literally as if they're waiting for the optics of the Kashmiris to res resist so that they can be even more brutal to them. This mm. is part of a Hindutva agenda and not, literally nothing else. So, Sriram, I see you shaking your head. Sriram, go ahead. See, um, I think a lot of fake news has been circulating, especially with international media, which have their own ideological biases here. I will say that... I'm sorry, um, this is not about international media. Uh, don't, don't just use the word fake news without... Respond substantively. Respond substantively to what I said. Don't say fake news. You're just being from. People, okay? And for your information... The security forces have always acted with a sense of restraint in Kashmir over the times. And well, ever since all the right, Pakistan... Then how many prosecutions have we had? How many so, Natasha, I, I, I'd love to hear what Sriram's point is on this. Sriram, go ahead. Uh, you know, and, uh, you know, pro portraying Indian army as somehow barbaric and all this, you know, this is the straight out of the Pakistani playbook. Natasha Kohl, from her surname, I guess, belongs to the Kashmiri funded community. That community was actually ethnically cleansed these were Hindus, minorities in Kashmir Valley. More than half a million of them have actually been forced to flee Kashmir and become uh, internally displaced people due to jihadist threats. So, in a way, she's talking against her own community here. But let me come back to the bigger point, which is, you know, this whole uh, agenda of showing that there is some big human rights, uh, you know, being crushed of the people and all this, all this is motivated by 
a sense of ideological bias. What you have on the ground is non-politicized, de-radicalized, ordinary Kashmiris of all faiths. Kashmiris, people of Jammu, people of Ladakh have appreciated what is happening because what they got in the last 70 years was no better. It was no better. So, Baba, is that a fear for you? What do you make of that comment? Absolutely. Like, we have, we have the uh, situation of Palestinians, how they have been reduced from, from uh, majority to minority. And then we have an example in JNK already, 1947, when the Jammu genocide happened. The entire region was turned from Muslim majority into Muslim minority area. So, so, so the fears are genuine. The anger is genuine. And, and I don't know what, what, what uh, you know, uh, I, I think the Indian media is like uh, not playing a good role here. And uh, Mr. Sriram, his information comes from the Indian media, which has been continuously saying that everything is hunky-dory in Kashmir, despite protests in Kargil, which is uh, a district in Ladakh, despite protests in uh, Saura, massive protests in Saura, which was initially denied by Indian government. And then, then, and then after BBC and Reuters and Al Jazeera reported it, uh, they've been saying that, yes, they were protesters. So, uh, so overall, the fear is that uh, most, uh, the Kashmiris will become minority in their own, uh, in their own, 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 uh, own state, their, their orchards, their agriculture fields, their, their, their houses will be taken up and they will be uh, cut to size. And, and see what, what's happening with the Indian Muslims. Those, those, uh, those, uh, uh, the plight of Indian Muslims is before everyone. They have been cut to size. They have no representation in media. They have no representation in the politics. And, and, uh, and now Kashmir was the last, uh, you know, post for, for RSS and BJP to go and, you know, uh, uh, cut Muslims in, in, in Kashmir to size. So, Baba, as you're talking, Sriram is, is shaking his head, Sriram. See, listen, this whole idea that somehow Muslims are under threat in India, this is a complete concoction. And this is part of the liberal international agenda as well as the Islamist agenda. Let me tell uh, you the truth. Are they, are they not being lynched there for, for transporting cattle and consuming beef? Even today, Pal Khan, who was lynched... Seven million. Who, who so, Baba, one I, moment, one I, moment, because we can't hear Sridham. Uh, Sridham, finish up your point, and then, Baba, you can get in. Muslims in India, 180 million, are living peacefully and are integrated into their respective communities. They are not living like a ghetto, like in Kashmir Valley, where 97% of the people are Muslim. So if there is intermixing, if there is interdependence with other people of other faiths, if they are willing to live together, if the Kashmiri pundits and the others who have been cleansed can be brought back and made to resettle, and if there is a more heterogeneous mix of the society, what's wrong with it? You people calling it, uh, you know, some kind of genocide, but let me tell you that this is how democracies should live. We should have a syncretic coexistence, not ethnic enclaves so, like Sridham, we had in Kashmir. I, I take your point. Our community would disagree with you. Of the show, we can keep the conversation going though on Twitter at AJ Stream, and of course also on AlJazeera.com forward slash the stream. I know there's much more to add. Thank you for joining us. Bye bye.